Hi there, in this video we will explore a module called mouse role that allows us to encapsulate behavior or state that can be shared between classes. If you come from object-oriented programming background or you have heard of concept called mixins, then you might be already familiar with the concept of roles. However, if you haven't heard anything about roles before, then in summary, roles are not classes, meaning you cannot inherit from a role and you cannot instantiate a role the same as we do with classes. Instead, roles are meant to be consumed by a class or another role to extend its functionality. When a role is consumed by a class, all the methods, modifiers, attributes defined in a role are added to the class that consumes that role. This allows us to easily decouple code logic that can be consumed by multiple classes without duplicating our code. Okay, that's a lot of talking about what is a role. I completely understand if none of this really makes any sense at the current time, but no worries. Let's look at some examples on how to create and consume a role, and I'm sure all of this will become much more clearer. All right, let's say we want to extend our human class functionality with two types of functionalities. We want our human to talk and walk. We could implement that logic inside the human class, but let's see how we could extract that logic into two separate roles that is going to handle the walking and talking. Now, the first thing we want to do, we want to create a new folder, and let's call that role. That's just a naming convention. So this is where all our roles are going to live. And I'm going to create two files. One is going to be named talk.pm. And the second file is going to be named walk.vm. As with the classes, we want to start with the package name. So it's going to be package role walk in this case. So two colons. And we want to return a truthy value. We want to use a package called mouse role. So we've been using mouse for the modules, but to implement the role, we need to use mouse colon colon role. And let's say for walk, we want to have two functionalities. So we're going to have an attribute called speed. And we're going to say is read only and is a or string. So that's going to contain a value, for example, fast or slow. And we're going to have a simple function. And I'm going to say sub walk. And there we're going to get self context. So myself. And we're just simply going to return string where we are going to say self name and concatenate that with is walking. And let's add the speed. So, oops, so self and speed. Okay, so we set a speed attribute and we created the walk method. Now the question is how we can use that role in our human class. Well, it's actually quite simple. So if you go to the human.pm, all we really need to do, and let's add that below the use mouse, we need to use this keyword, which is called with, and then you define the role name. In this case, we know our role is in role, colon, colon, walk. All right. So by doing so, we're going to inherit all the functionality that we currently have defined in our role, which is going to be the speed attribute and the walk method. And how this happens behind the scenes, basically when you consume a role, all of this functionality gets copied into the human class or, well, any class that consumes a role. Now let's try to call this method, print out the return value. So in our test script, we already have a human variable being instantiated from human class. So all we really want to do is we want to call the method walk. So if we save that, go to the script, run this, and we're getting an error because, yes, we did find that we want our walk method to print out name and concatenate that with additional data. However, we don't have a name variable defined. Defining name in a role, in this case, doesn't really make sense. A name would be something that really belongs to the human class. So we're going to say has name, and it's going to be read-only, and it's going to be a string, as we have done before. All right. If we just save that and let's go back to the test script and where we instantiate a new instance of human. We're going to say name going to be Joe and let's rerun the script as we're not seeing anything because we also want to print this out. So I'm just going to warn this and let's rerun that again. All right, so we're seeing this warning that we're using an initialized value in concatenation, but we're still seeing the Joe is walking part. We're not just seeing the last part that we're concatenating, which is the speed. So we know that we can call the walk method. Now, how do we set that speed attribute? Well, it's actually really simple. So as I said before, when you consume a role, you get all the functions and attributes copied into the class that is consuming it. So all we really need to do is we just need to say speed and let's say fast. And if we save that and rerun the script, we're now going to see that Joe is walking fast. And we are calling this from this function, walk, that comes from role walk that's being consumed by the human class. Now, the cool thing is that you're not bound to only consuming one role. You can consume as many roles as you want. 
So if we go back to the talk role, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to say package, and this is then talk, returning a truthy value, and we're going to say that this has, oops, so we also need to say use mouse role, and we're going to say that this has a language attribute, or human is going to speak a specific language, and as before, is going to be read only, and is a is going to be a string. So this attribute that we're installing called language is expecting a string. So that's pretty simple. And let's say that we also want to introduce a method which is called speak. So as before, we're going to say my self getting that from the global orgs list. And we're just going to say self. So self name concatenate that with a string which says speaks and concatenate that with self language so if we save that that looks good and how do we use the second role it's very simple it's the same as we did with the first role we just provide it as a list argument to this with keyword so we can say role speak save that if we go back to the test script we just copy the line where we call the walk method and we can say speak right and now we also know that in the talk module we need to provide a language so going back to the test script we can say that language here is going to be spanish so if we save it and rerun the script looks like we have a compilation error ah uh, yes of course because we called our role talk but looks like we are actually trying to consume a role which is speak so this shouldn't be speak this should be talk if we save that the script and here we go we can see that now the second line that we're printing is that joe speaks spanish that we are printing out here from the speak method so hopefully by now you can see how roles can be really powerful. Now this is a very basic example where we're just kind of constructing human with a talk role and walk role. But let's imagine you have a functionality where you need to make requests in your code and you don't want to kind of copy, let's say making a post request, getting back response, decoding it and so on and so on. You could define a role where you do the request, decode the response and then just keep reusing the same role in other modules. Let's explore additional cool things we can use with roles. Now one thing is called requires. So in your role, you can use this keyword, which is called requires, and then define a list of methods you want your class that is consuming that role to implement. For example, you can say requires something like dance, right? We can say that if you want to consume this role walk, then your class consuming this role must implement a dance method. Now let's not do anything at this point with our human class, and let's try to rerun the script. We're going to see an exception. That exception says that the role that we're consuming requires the method dance to be implemented by the human class. So all we really need to do, we just need to go back to our human class, and we can say sub dance. And we're not going to define any logic here, but for sake of example, let's just see if we do add this method and rerun the script, and it's going to be printing the two lines as before. You might be wondering at this point, what happens if there are same methods in multiple roles I want to consume? Wouldn't there be a conflict? Yes, you're right, there would be a conflict. Let's try to replicate that conflict by example. So I'm just going to add two simple methods in both roles, where I'm going to say sub test and I'm not going to add any functionality for that subroutine. We just want to replicate the conflict. And also if we go to the talk and do sub test and no functionality there as well. If we rerun the script, we're going to see a warning that says due to method name conflict in roles. And then we see the two roles that we're consuming. The method test must be implemented or excluded by the human class which are consuming the roles. And that is really good that we're getting this warning, because if we have the same method names in multiple roles, we wouldn't really know what is the functionality that would be copied into the human class. So if one role would do a completely different thing from the other role, it just would be too ambiguous. So what do we need to do? We need to explicitly rename these functions we are consuming, and we also need to exclude the original function name in our class that is consuming the roles, so there wouldn't be any conflict. And how we can do that is actually quite simple. So I'm going to adjust the alignment here, and I'm going to put all the roles in a separate line. And what we need to do now, we can provide a fatter annotation, and we can use this keyword alias, and then we use a hashref, and in that hashref, you want to provide a key being the method name where we have the conflict. In this case, that would be test, and value would be how would you like to alias that in this case we have the test method which is conflicting in the walk role so we can say test underscore 
walk and we can do the exactly same thing for the talk role i'm just going to copy what we wrote all before and i'm going to rename this to talk so again we are using two roles we know that we have test methods in both of these roles as we defined before talk and walk and we are getting this conflict and now in human class we are just saying hey when i'm consuming this role i would like to alias the test method to this new name which is test underscore walk and for the talking role we would like to alias the test method to test underscore talk and if we try to rerun the script oops looks like we're still getting an error all right yes i did forgot to mention that when we're using the alias we're just copying that method name with a different alias method name so what would happen behind the scenes we would still have the test method from the role copied into the class that's consuming the role and then we would have additional method next to it which is called test underscore walk or test underscore talk now the problem is that since we're just copying the methods with different names the original method still stays in a place so what we also need to do we need to exclude it and how we can exclude a method after aliasing it it's quite simple so we just use the excludes keyword and we say which method we want to exclude in this case this is going to be our test method that we are aliasing with a different name and if we just copy that same line to our talk role save it rerun the script we're going to see that it's passing now and now what we would expect are two methods in our human class so test walk and test talk and just to make sure that it's working as expected, if we actually add a warning in both of our roles, and let's say test talking, save that, and we can also warn here and say so warn test walking, save that, and let's go to our test script, and we can say human and call a method, so that's that would be test talk and human test walk. If we save that the script what they're going to see is that now we have two methods on the human class which are called test underscore talk where we are warning out test talking and we also have a test walk and there we are warning test walking now i also mentioned that you can consume roles in another roles so let's quickly look at that so if you go to our talk role and let's say we want to consume a role in this role let's introduce a new role let's call it test.pm and let's do package role test return truthy value use mouse role and here we're just going to have a simple subroutine where we can say sub using test role and we can just warn i am using test role and how can we consume this role in our talking or walking role is actually quite simple let's consume it in a talk role and it's the same as we did with the class we just say with role test save that and we know that in our test role we have using test role i'm just going to copy this method go to the test script i'm going to comment out all the previous things that we printed and i'm going to say human and call that method which is using underscore test underscore role and save that run the script and here we go I'm saying I'm using test role printed out. And again, there is nothing special about consuming roles within another roles. You define a role, you use the with keyword to consume another role, and then that functionality from the role that you're consuming within a role just gets copied in the consuming role as well. So we get all the methods and attributes. And when we consume the talking role, all the additional functionality from multiple roles gets copied into the class that is consuming the role. In this case, which is the human class. And this is why we have that method that we introduced, which is called using test role, and we could call it on the human instance. All right, that's it for this video. We explored what are roles, how to create and consume roles, and how to deal with method name conflicts in multiple roles. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you at the next one.